<laughs> G'day folks, I'm Mick from Sale from Ironman 4x4. Let's discuss the controversial subject of bull bars, underbody plates, side steps, battery equipment, canopies, roof racks, sliding systems, water storage, additional fuel, everything that can be done. Dun, dun, da, dun, dun. Good day folks and welcome to another Ironman 4x4 Tech Talk video. My name is Mick Fansell. There are many fortunate folk out there that are able to go out and buy a brand new four-wheel drive or near new four-wheel drive, bring it to a shop like ours and have it kitted out front to rear, top to bottom, all in one go. Big budget stuff. If you're like me, however, and on a bit of a smaller budget, it's actually better to do it in stages. A little bit at a time, one thing at a time, because what happens is invariably with any overlanding vehicle, whether it was built all in one go at the beginning or whether it's done in stages, when you start using it over, over landing and you start using the gear on your vehicle, you sometimes realize that whatever has been fitted to the vehicle doesn't work quite the way you expected or the way you set it up is actually becoming a bit of a pain in the bum and you need to change it. So when you have a vehicle that was built all in one go right at the beginning, Sometimes it takes a lot of work to change even small things because they're all done at the same time and they're all interlinked. Whereas if you build your vehicle over a bit of an evolutionary process a little bit of a time, you can tweak it as you go along and you invariably end up with a good acceptable result. And it's never really actually finished, is it? You just keep on spending money on it, which is yeah, great for us, obviously. Behind me is my Land Cruiser 76 series station wagon. And like all the vehicles here at Ironman 4x4 head office, these vehicles were built A to Z front to rear, top to bottom, all in one go when we first got there. But even though our vehicles are similar, they're not all identical because we are, after all, all individuals. So I've been driving my Land Cruiser for just on two years now, minus the little bit we spent during lockdown. And I've really gotten to the point now where there are one or two things that I'd want to change on the vehicle. I really love, for the most part, the way I set it up, and I think it came out really good. And if I was pressed, I could live with it the way it is. But there are just a couple of things which I want to tweak and change and I thought I'd take this opportunity to introduce you guys to my truck, show you everything I love about it. I've done a hell of a lot to change it and to make it more comfortable. And then I'll show you the couple of things which are a bit irksome, a bit irritating, which I want to change. I'll be doing those changes myself because I don't really like anybody else working on my truck. A little bit of OCD. And I'll show you how I do that. And then I'll show you the result when it's all done. On the front of my cruiser, I have put a Ironman 4x4 commercial, a premium deluxe bull bar. And the big difference is that this pipe along the top here is a much thicker diameter than on the, the smaller vehicles, the Hiluxes and all the rest of it. So these uh, premium bars are only available really for the Land Cruisers and the Prados. They just fit the chunky nature of the vehicle, this thicker pipe up here. Um, LED fog lights, they repeat straight off the wiring that uh, the vehicle came with. Underneath we have some rated recovery points, there's one on either side. You can basically hang the vehicle on these recovery points. They're rated and tested and that's, that's what you need to have when you're doing snatch recoveries or snatch block uh, winching. Never on the tow hook of the vehicle. Uh, some underbody protection here as well. A 12,000 pound winch with a synthetic rope. Synthetic rope, of course, lighter. I've also put on our top of the range LED fog lights, spotlights rather, these are nine inch. They're about 100 watts each and they're really, really bright. Great for when you're traveling in rural areas where there are wild animals next to the road. They've saved my bacon more than once. I've also fitted a set of branch deflectors on the front. No, they're not for hanging underwear at the campsite. They actually have a, a good purpose. When you're traveling through very thick shrub and bush, they actually part the bush so that you can see where you're going and you don't drive into a, a tree or something like that. The old trusty Ironman 4x4 snorkel. This vehicle actually did come out with a Toyota snorkel, but well, it wasn't very waterproof or dustproof for that matter, so we whipped it off and we put on a proper Ironman 4x4 snorkel. These are side rails. You can see here that they've done quite a bit of work. Uh, they basically just keep any shrubbery or whatnot off the, the paintwork of the vehicle. Ironman 4x4 steel side steps and this thick tube uh, goes through from the front right to the back so it all matches. On the roof I have a full length uh, front runner roof rack, very handy and on the side of it I've hung a two and a half meter by two and a half meter Ironman awning and this awning is great because I also have a two and a half meter by two and a half meter awning room also from Ironman 4x4 and it just hangs on this awning and it's a full six sided in other words four sides a floor and a roof uh, so it's actually a tent 
uh, a fully fledged tent. It's not just an awning room as such. It's actually a fully fledged tent. It's nice for two stretches if you don't want to be rooftop tenting it. On the rear of the vehicle, I have a Gobi X rear bumper tow bar wheel carrier unit. Um, again, another product by my good friend Chris at Gobi X. Great product. I've used it extensively and it just it just keeps on going. Originally, the spare wheel of the Land Cruiser was mounted to the back door, and over time, uh, it can actually have a, a negative effect on the, the hinges of the door, and then the door starts leaking dust. And especially if you're fitting bigger, oversized tires like I have, it's not a good idea to hang those from the door. So a rear wheel carrier is absolutely a must. This is the old Ironman 4x4 rear wheel bag. This is fantastic for either firewood or Crush your cans, make sure all your plastic, everything goes in here, go back home and dispose of it at a recycling uh, outlet properly as you should. On this side I have on the other arm a double jerry can holder. So when I'm going somewhere where I need additional fuel, I'll put two 20 litre jerry cans in here so it gives me another 40 litres of diesel. But if I'm going somewhere where fuel is not an issue, I have 40 litres of nice clean drinking water in an Ironman 4x4 watering can with a tap down here, which is of course very handy. Also on this arm, I have a bracket that holds my two recovery tread plates. Um, and to the back of that, I've strapped my Ironman 4x4 shovel, which is a short and a long handle shovel in one. It's all out of the way at the back here. It's not stuff that you use all day long every day, but when you do need to get to it, it's, it's quite handy to get to. Let's move around the uh, rest of the vehicle here. This side is pretty much the same as that side, excepting for this awning over here. This is an Alucab 270 degree awning by another mate of mine down in Cape Town, Jeremy from Alucab. A fantastic product, folks. Very high quality, very well made, and I use it all the time. Unfortunately, it's going to have to come off there pretty uh, soon as there's some new product developments with Ironman, so stay tuned to uh, find out what's potting. At each corner of the roof rack, I've hung um, these Ironman 4x4 10 watt spotlights. They're handy little spotlights. You can use them in camp, although they tend to be a little bit bright. But if you're doing any game driving at night, you can put them on and you can see uh, for quite a ways into the felt next to the vehicle, which is great. Michael loves that. It's the best feature on the car as far as he's concerned. So for those of you that have never driven inside a Land Cruiser or been inside one, uh, take it from me, there's not a hell of a lot going on in here as standard. And you've really got to add a number of bits and pieces to make it livable, especially if you're using this vehicle as an overlanding vehicle. The vehicle comes standard with power steering. It comes standard with a very effective manual air conditioning system. It has electric windows and central locking. And you have a single cup holder. So we don't know who's gonna use that. Somebody's gonna be drinking and somebody's gonna go thirsty. What I've done is to add especially storage space because I have binoculars and I have cameras and I have all kinds of stuff when I'm overlanding. So the first thing I did was I purchased this parcel shelf over here, made by Big Country 4x4. It's a really great piece of kit, it's aluminium. It's very nicely finished off. It's got these brackets on the front to stop anything from falling down on you, especially when you're overlanding. And over here I have things like an emergency jacket, caps, tissues, and binoculars, and a couple of other things that are hiding up there. The next thing I did was I purchased this sunglasses holder and map reading light. This is an original Toyota part and it's off the previous generation Hilux Fortuner. Uh, it's not grey in colour, they didn't have stock, but it's out of the way and it serves a purpose and it keeps my sunglasses safe because I don't like them getting scratched. The one thing about this parcel shelf which is a bit irksome though, is the fact that the sun visors are now dropped down lower and when they're in their lowest position I can actually not see the road ahead of me. So I end up using it only over that. Uh, movement over there. So what I'm thinking of doing is taking them off and printing, 3D printing, some narrow ones that I'll fix here and we'll see how that turns out. That's a nice little custom project that lies ahead. But overall, very chuffed with that. Didn't have to drill any holes. It just goes into the uh, pre-existing holes in the roof. So it works. I'm happy with that. The other thing I've done is to get a dashboard protector and this one is particularly nice. It's by Caracol. Um, it has these pockets, there's three of them up here, they're attached with Velcro and you can put you know, all kinds in here. And when you're overnighting somewhere and the vehicle is perhaps in a, a less than safe area and you're scared of smash and grab, you can always just rip the Velcro off here and take these inside if there are valuables in there. So yep, another great piece of kit. 
Cell phones are nowadays used for uh, navigation and in-car entertainment and uh, you know communicating. So it's important that it is not handheld and that you don't interfere with it. And I am a great fan of Ram mounts. This is a very super sturdy mount. Even when I've been over the roughest of rough terrain, you can see exactly what's going on in your map. Uh, no issue, so I'm very chuffed with that. Little tire money, tire pressure monitor and tire temperature monitor. German product, very accurate, very important. It has saved a tire here for me on this particular vehicle, so I'm very chuffed with that. Um, removed that single cup holder, because that was just useless, and I've replaced it with this entire unit here from my good friend Chris Ingram at Gobi X. So this is a much taller, much more spacious center console, and it's a fantastic piece of kit. It's got easy access here, and you can see I, I have a lot of stuff. Uh, it's got a nice deep bin on top here for all kinds of stuff you need to get to. But the other nice thing is that it's a lockable safe, and that's just massive. So you can, you know, you can put cameras inside here. It'll take uh, uh, iPads and phones and whatnot, and it's lockable and everything is safe. And then there's a little parcel shelf here. There's another one over there, and I now have two proper cup holders. So both the wife and I are happy we both got a cup holder. Um, that's pretty much it up front here. There's these removable cup holders from, also from Big Country. Now they're, they're okay, but sometimes I forget that I have my coffee in there and I climb out and I slam the door shut and then there's coffee all over the place. So those will have to go, I'm afraid. And I'm thinking of doing something down in the bottom of the door, which I'll, I'll show you in a second. Now, probably one of the biggest upgrades I did to this vehicle is to put in a, a high-end in-car entertainment system. I love music. Um, this is my office away from my office. I spend a lot of time here. I love listening to music. And when I do listen to music, I like listening to it on a very decent uh, hi-fi system or indeed a, a system in the vehicle. So this vehicle has the full Monty. It has a top of the range Kenwood head unit. It'll play DVDs, but that's not really a requirement for me. But the big thing about this head unit is it is Apple CarPlay. I use Apple phone. So as soon as I get into the vehicle, even wirelessly, um, I can make calls, I can navigate, and I don't have to look at the phone or handle the phone in any way. The other thing I've done here is this entire vehicle has been sound deadened, the entire cabin. So it's a lot quieter in here than in a normal Land Cruiser. So you don't have to crank the hell out of your stereo system. And you don't have that fatigue on long trips with wind noise and road noise and tire noise. A lot of that has been taken away by uh, the sound deadening on the vehicle. We have a small little subwoofer in the back because who doesn't like bass? And we have a Focal Flex split system, which is well, it's, it's, it's a bit expensive, but it's really, really high end. And I'm really happy with the warm sound in this vehicle. When I want to crank it up a bit uh, to listen to some melodic techno, we can do that. And if we just want to chill out and listen to some American folksy type music, we can do that as well. But I'm really chuffed with this, uh, with the sound setup and uh, it was an absolute must in my vehicle. This is a nice little touch. It is a solid stainless steel gear shifter. My very good mate, shout out to Tony in Perth. Um, he made this for me when I was uh, a very young man and I was driving go fast and little hatchbacks and he made this stunning piece of engineering for me and it has basically come through most of my vehicles and it's back in my vehicle now in the cruiser and I say it, it's quite heavy and when you're doing gear changes because of the weightiness at the end of the stick it actually makes the gear change uh, easier believe it or not. So I'm really chuffed that it's back in the vehicle because my previous vehicle had fancy knobs and stuff on the gear knob and I couldn't fit this one so yippee. Another important upgrade that I've done to the front in the cabin here are these USB charging ports. I've put a couple of them around the cabin because they're really handy to have. You know, you've always got your phone with you um, or your uh, 3D, uh, 3G dongle or tablets or whatnot. And I've got a couple uh, that I've fitted behind here as well. And they're all connected to the auxiliary battery. So they're on at all times. So even when you're overnighting somewhere, you can leave your iPad or whatever in here and it'll charge. You don't have to have the uh, ignition on which uh, it works great. And for the most part, folks, that's that's the front of the cabin here. This is where I live most of the time. And I'm not displeased with anything here, really, apart from maybe that which I'll, I'll tweak. Um, but it's really in the back of the vehicle where I need to do most of the changes. So let's go and have a look at the packing system in the back of the vehicle, and I'll show you what's going on there. 
Just before we get to the back of the vehicle, I wanted to show you the door panels and the sound install um, on the front doors and the back doors have just got smaller panels. Now these panels I got just before we did the sound install in a bit of a hurry. And while they're very robust, I was never really impressed with the shape of them or the covering. This is vinyl and you can see it's taken a bit of a knock here. So what I actually wanna do here is I wanna change the shape of it. I wanna take a lot of this away here. I wanna put a cup holder down here and I'm actually gonna end up 3D printing the cup holder and marrying it to the MDF wood and then put a bit of a pocket down here just for, I don't know, maps and oddments. And then I'm gonna be covering it in a gray acoustic carpet because the acoustic carpet, you know, you can scuff it, you can bump it, you can do it, you can clean it. It's hard, certainly harder wearing than this, uh, than this gray stuff. So that's all gonna be replaced as well. Now we get to the section of the vehicle where most of the change is gonna happen. That's my storage, storage solution. So I have replaced the standard rear windows of the Land Cruiser. There were some glass windows here that popped open. I took those out and I fitted these front runner lockable secure uh, doors to the side and they're just very, very handy. On the inside, I got some window boxes from Big Country, the guy who did the uh, parcel shelf in the front. And these window boxes are fixed to the inside uh, of the vehicle and you have this great little storage space which would have otherwise have been wasted space. So here's the first issue that I need to rectify. The battery in this vehicle is on the passenger side. So we elected to fit the auxiliary battery on the passenger side as well and have the main feed from the battery running along a chassis leg of the vehicle and not crossing over to the other side of the vehicle. But at the end of the day, it's a bit of an issue because it means that my electrical system is on this side of the vehicle and my kitchen is on the other side of the vehicle, which is the wrong side of the vehicle. You don't want it on the road side of the vehicle, you want it on the pavement side of the vehicle. So this is the, the major change that has to take place, is that I have to move the battery, which I'll show you in a second. We have to move it to that side. We have to run the, uh, the feed from the front battery across the vehicle where it's safe and where it's best to do so, and move all of these items here into the window box on the other side of the vehicle. Um, Inverter charger, a two-in-one unit from Victron, fantastic piece of kit. When you're parked at a campsite or at home and you want to charge the batteries, plug the car into 220 volts and switch on the charger and it'll charge the battery. When you are at a campsite where you have no power and you want to charge cell phones, tablets, PCs, drone batteries, camera batteries, you need pure sine wave power, which this supplies, and you flick the switch the other way and then you have pure sine wave 220 volts coming out of uh, this plug point over here. I also have Victron's um, monitoring system on here. So this not only tells me the voltage, it also tells me the capacity of the batteries and what the current draw is on the battery. So I can see exactly what my fridge is drawing and if I've got camping lights on. And at night when I'm up in the rooftop tent, I can actually go into my phone on the app and see what's potting here and see what my battery management is like. And if I need to do something the next day really special like plug in solar or go for a long drive. So it all works very, very well. And I've got this little space over here where I put camp lights, uh, spotlight, all the electrical stuff. But as I said, we're gonna be moving this to the other side. And then in this window box, we're gonna be doing a full kitchen install here. So all the eating utensils, cutlery and crockery is gonna be on this side, nicely under this big awning here. As I said, that's probably one of the, the major changes. It's gonna be the most work is running all the wiring and, and whatnot. So let's go and have a look at the other side box very quickly. The box on the right hand side of the vehicle is really empty at the moment and I use it to put stuff I want to keep safe like cameras, um, there's cutlery in here, my tripod is in here, but as I said what's going to happen here is the electric is going to move to this side, the other side is going to become kitchen space and that's going to free up some of the space in the rear of the vehicle and that's where all of this gear will go. So let's quickly have a squiz at what's happening in the back. In the back of the vehicle is where it's all happening. Just open the two arms and barn doors. I prefer barn doors to lift up doors. Now folks, this is a, a really custom made setup. These drawers are a one-off McFin sale built drawer system. They're very sturdy and they're very quiet. So whatever's rattling in here, you actually don't hear it inside the vehicle, not like a lot of drawer systems. And then on this side, we have a dual door Ironman 4x4 fridge. And I normally have fridge this side and in the smaller section, I have a freezer for ice, for gin and tonic. 
as you do. Um, what's nice about this is I've actually got a dual hob cooker top in here and I just drop the pipe down there. I have a gas bottle that I normally store on the roof. I pop that down there and eggs and bacon or whatever you want to do right here, which is great and it works like a charm. I love doing it. Breakfast is my favorite meal to prepare. And then I've got two drawers here which are uh, really used for groceries, dry foods. The top drawer being a bit deeper had cutlery and crockery and all the cook cooking gear in there. That's going to move to the kitchen. The kitchen's electrics are going to move over there. So there's going to be more space here for dry foods and that type of stuff. The fridge is on an Ironman 4x4 fridge slider. It's not plugged in at the moment. And it's also very handy. Like I said, fridge this side, freezer that side. Uh, very accessible. Um, and you don't need to pull it out to actually get into it. Although it's advisable, and especially when you're camping, by the way, um, the ventilation for this fridge is in the front. So it's always best to have it out in the shade so that you get good ventilation. It just makes your fridge more efficient and use less power, just as an aside. Now, this is all gonna change as well because this is the auxiliary battery and we wanna be moving that to this side of the vehicle so it's close to all our electrics. And in order to do that, I have to move the fridge to this side because I don't want the wires running from this side across to that side and you know they need to come in and out of the fridge. So I'm actually gonna be taking the fridge and swinging it around and fitting it here. And then this drawer system is gonna move over to this side. And I've measured it all up and it should be a tight fit as it is now. The next issue that I want to fix is the fact that on top here, normally when we're traveling, and remember it's me and it's Alma, my wife, and my 11-year-old son, Michael. So I've taught them, uh, which is mission impossible, but I've taught them to travel light. It's one bag each and then some other odds and, odds and ends. But the problem is when you put everything inside here, the first issue is you can have stuff going forward, so there needs to be a barrier over there, a safety barrier to keep everything in the back here. And the second thing is, if we stop next to the road and we want to get something out of the fridge, I've got to take whatever's over here and take it out and then get into the fridge and put it back and that's just, it's becoming a pain in the bum really. So what I want to do here is once I've moved this to this side and moved this to this side, I actually want to put a nice surface covered in this hardware and carpet. It's stood up really well after two years of, of serious touring. I'm going to be putting a top in here which goes you know, it fills this space right up to the, the back of the door. And then you can put whatever you want to up here. There'll be a safety barrier, it can't go anywhere. And if I do need to get into the fridge while the vehicle is loaded, it's a question of just popping it out, getting into the fridge and pushing it back. And that's really the gist of it. There's an open space on the side here, which um, I have odds and sods in there. Right now is the Ironman 4x4 uh, quick fold step, which um, comes in very handy when you have a short mother-in-law that needs to get into the vehicle. It's just been Mother's Day, so that's why it's still here. It doesn't normally stay here. But there's a space here, it's an oddman space, and this is now gonna be on that side. And I really need to have a space where I can keep the vehicle jack, the little toolbox I have, and, and keep it closed away so it doesn't move and rattle around. So we'll be building something special on that side once we've moved the battery over to this side. And that's really about the size of the changes I want to make. I think if I make these changes, it'll be a little more livable and a, a little more enjoyable. So uh, stay tuned and you'll see how we go.
Day one of the rejigging of my 76 Land Cruiser, I spent most of the day just taking everything out that needs to come out and I'm just about done. Thank goodness it's home time so we can carry on tomorrow. But essentially what I've done is I've taken the two side boxes out, uh, the fridge slider, the drawer system, and I've had to disconnect all of the electrics. But to get this box out, I had to get my little toolbox out first, uh, which meant I had to disassemble the whole panel here because like I said at the beginning of this video, when you have a build where it's all in one, a lot of things are interlinked and when you want to get to one thing, you have to take a whole lot of stuff out. So that's what happened in this case. But everything is out. I've come across another couple of issues like the inner uh, part of the fender here is very dusty and I suspect it's these vents, uh, the air pressure vents on the back here. Um, and I have a, a massive aversion for dust. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some nice uh, sponge some high density sponge and I'm actually going to fill that area with sponge. I'm not too stressed about the air pressure in the car when the doors open and closed, but I certainly want to keep the dust out. So I'll do that while I'm busy with uh, this rejig. So tomorrow, what I'll do is I'll move the electrics from this box into that box and we have to run the wires from the front battery all the way around to that side of the vehicle. We also have to mount the battery box on top of the wheel arch here. It used to be over here, so we're moving it that side. And that's actually a good thing because it'll free up this entire space here for me next to the drawer system for things like uh, bottles of water, bottles of cold drink, a couple of six packs of beers, or whatever the case may be. So that's the plan for tomorrow. So uh, we'll see you then. Morning folks and welcome to day two in the back of my Land Cruiser. So the very first thing I want to do today is to mount the battery box which used to sit over there. It needs to go on that side on top of the wheel arch and um, I'm really hoping it's going to fit because if it doesn't then I have to revert to plan B which I don't have as yet so it has to go in there. After that I'm going to be running all the wires which are down this side of the car moving them over to this side connecting it all up uh, the step after that is to transfer all the electrical uh, controls, dual battery system, all of that stuff out of that window box. Remember we said we were going to put it into this window box, connect it all up, and that should take care of the electrical transformation. Straight after that, I'll be moving the drawer system, which used to stand over here. That's going to now go on the left-hand side and the fridge on the right-hand side, so it can be close to the electrics. And that should really bring us up to the end of today. So if all goes according to plan. So without further ado, let me get stuck in.
as discussed, we've moved the electrics from the passenger side window box to the driver side window box. We've kept everything pretty much as it was. We've changed a couple of things, uh, specifically the wiring in, inside, I've neatened that up. We've obviously had to move all the feed wiring from that side of the vehicle to this side. The battery has now moved to on top of the wheel arch here. It used to be in the back corner over there. So all the wiring comes down this side and feeds into the electrical system over here. The one major thing I did change was the feed from Camp Power. Um, I just used to have a plug dangling here that plugged into the lead. Now I still have a lead coming to the back of the car. I can use that lead to power the fridge when I'm at the camp or whatever. And then I've got a little kettle cord that comes up here and plugs in here, which is really convenient. Uh, the other thing is that it's opened up this little space over here, which is very handy for my other electrical stuff, which is a very good um, voltage meter. Always handy when you're traveling, if you have an electrical problem. Camp lantern, very important. Nice rechargeable search light, that's always handy. In here I have LED lights and head torches and stuff. And there's a nice snug little hole up here. The tight fit is a good fit. And there we go, that's all my electrics sorted. And that's freed up the other window box, which will now become a dedicated kitchen. I never used to have a dedicated kitchen. Some of the stuff was in the drawer, some of it was in the separate ammo box. Now all cutlery and crockery is gonna go into the other side window box. Very convenient, on the safe side of the vehicle, under the awning. So I'm really chuffed the way it's turned out. Let's have a look in the back of the vehicle and see what we've done there. Of course, the highlight of this makeover has been the total refit in the back of the vehicle here. Um, the major change has been moving the electrics from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. And because of that, I've had to move the fridge to this side as well. I didn't want the fridge on the other side of the vehicle and running wires to the opposite side of the vehicle, as close to the battery as possible. I was a bit concerned that the fridge and the drawers were not gonna fit in uh, the opposite way to which they were because the shape of the vehicle is slightly different in the back. But I must say that it's a snug, tight fit. Everything fits perfectly, so a good result. There are two things that I've added to the rear of the vehicle which I didn't have before. The first one is this hanging net over here, a very handy feature. Um, it's going to carry my solar panel. It's gonna be out of the way. Solar panels can be a bit uh, fragile, so it's good that they're out of the way, out of harm's way. And the other feature, which is really the highlight of this makeover for me, is this parcel shelf. Um, previously, I didn't have the parcel shelf, and in the back here are normally our clothing bags. So when you stop next to the road and you need to access the fridge, or even when you get to camp and you wanna crack a beer, you have gotta unpack everything first before you can pull the fridge out. With this shelf in place now, the fridge can come out and go back in without that hassle. So I really can't believe I traveled for two years without this shelf. I can't tell you why that happened, but any of it. So I'm really, really chuffed the way it's come out. I've got some hidey holes over here. There's some place over here for some additional beer or whatever. So a good result at the end of the day. I will be hitting the road in a couple of weeks time. I'm taking my family to Namibia, uh, pretty much the same route as we did uh, very recently with the iron van. I'll be taking the camera along and shooting some video and some pictures and show you how this has, uh, has turned out in practice. So look out for that video, subscribe to our channel, hit the notification so you don't miss any of our videos. And I hope you enjoyed this video as much as what I did working on my truck. See you next time.